Hello guys, today we are talking about client side dehydration errors and why they suck. I'm going to rumble for a few minutes on some of the errors that put me just a little over the edge sometimes and how I fix them. Let's get into it. So let's say I want to build a login redirection feature in my site. So for example, you might have seen this pattern somewhere. So let's say I'm on the GitHub page for example and I want to visit the notifications page. So because I'm not signed in, it redirects me to the sign in page and if you look closely at the URL, there's a return to query stream where the value is uh, the page that you're going to visit previously. So that means when I log in successfully, I'll be taken back to the notification page instead of on the home page. So let's say this is our home page and we have a, a sign up link here and you want to add the redirection feature. So in Next.js, we can use the use router hook to get the current URL the user is in and then use that as the redirection URL. So let's do it. So we are using the use router hook. And then to get uh, the current path that the user is in, we use the as path parameter of that object. So let's see what it is. So if you look into the console, the as path is uh, like the root path currently. So if we add, let's say a query parameter, you can see the as path has changed. We could use path name, for example, but the problem with path name is uh, it won't capture the query parameters. As you can see here, the as path correctly it displays the full path plus the query parameter but the path name just gets the full path we want to redirect exactly the position the user was in by getting the query string together with the the path name so with this we can append the redirect url to the sign up url so let's set it to the as path when you hover on the link you can see that the query string is not formatted properly so instead of directly embedding it inside the string we could pass a url object with the path name and then add a query string with the redirect URL set to the as path. We should use a next link component here instead of the normal uh, link tag. Good. So if you hover over the link, you can see that uh, the redirect URL is properly encoded. So it looks like everything in our component is standard and works the way we want it to work. So we could just close our computer and ship this to production right away because everything works, right? Uh, not really. So if you refresh the page, you'll notice an error in the console here. Property href did not match the server. So on the server, the redirect URL looks like it captured only the path name but on the client, it captured both path name and the query parameters. So why? Why are they different? So if we look at the server logs, you can see that uh, on the client side, the as path is the full path including the query string. And if you look at the server, the server logs, the as path is only the path name. So I don't know if this is intentional on Next.js part, but it looks like the server has no access to the query string. I have no idea why that is the case, but it looks like you're going to have to find a way to fix this. So the first and easiest way we can fix this is use the is ready parameter of the use router hook. So we want to access the parameters only after the router is ready. So what we can do is uh, say declare a redirect URL variable and then check if it's ready use the absolute path otherwise use the root path. So let's try to use this directly here. So if we refresh the page then the error is gone. The link still points to the correct URL. Let's try to log the redirect URL to the console to see what it is. So you can see on the client is the correct path on the server. Let's refresh the page to see see the log on the server. So on the server it will be the root path but on the client it will be the full path. You can see that on the client at first it becomes the root path and then finally the correct path is loaded. So the router is ready after the page has been hydrated. So this works but it may not be that effective sometimes. So let's say a user has disabled JavaScript. So let's disable JavaScript and then refresh the page. If you look at the link, the redirect URL is no longer the full path. So if you disable JavaScript, then the page will be server side rendered. So users will receive different experiences in your site depending on whether they enable or disable JavaScript. If it's really important to you that your users get the same experience in your website regardless of their setup, then you can go on and uh, implement a better way. So one way we can fix this is by getting uh, the redirect URL from the server instead of uh, doing everything on the client. So one way to do this is to say export a get server side props function and then we can um, generate the redirect URL here. So we can say um, construct a new URL search params object. So const params is equals to new URL search params with the query passed in. So there's a type error here. Let's just uh, 
cast it to an object so you return props redirect url is equals to should be the sign up page with the string find value of this params object so this will convert this object into a query string automatically for us so the url is no longer changing from the root path to the full path so it's only one value and if we look at the server it's the same thing so that's one way to fix that i don't know if this is uh, the most elegant way to solve it but generally this is how i fix it. If there is an error when I'm trying to do something on the client side and there is a rehydration errors, I just move whatever I was doing to the server that I have the same value on the server and on the client. So another rehydration issue that really messes my mind up is dates. So for example, in this component, we are using the time ago function to show a human friendly date format here. So given a raw date string like this, we pass it to the format function of time ago and then display a human readable format. So let's go to the page to see how it works. So you can see this date here was uh, seven minutes ago and everything looks good. If you refresh the page, everything looks good and the correct relative time period is shown. Now the way this relative uh, time format functions work is that if the date is uh, less than a minute, it's going to show the time period in seconds. So if it's less than a minute, like uh, 10 seconds ago, it's going to show 10 seconds ago, 20 seconds ago, 30 seconds ago, and so forth. And then if it passes a minute, it's going to show the time periods in minutes. Let's say we use a date that is less than a minute ago. So let's generate a new date object like this. Copy it and then use it as the as the date time. So you can see this date was 13 seconds ago. Now see what happens when you refresh the page. Immediately, you saw a flash there that was 29 seconds ago and then you got this error message. So the error message was the text content did not match. So the server was 28 seconds ago and the client was 29 seconds ago. So there was like a one second period between the server and the client where the data did not match. So if you refresh the page again, you're going to, sh to see the same error. So if it's less than one minute long, you're going to to get this rehydration warning let's see if the error is going to show after one minute so you can see the error has gone after one minute so if you refresh the again error is gone now this error can make you lose your mind because someone may report that they are seeing this error message but when you go to test you can't seem to see it and you can't seem to reproduce their issue because the error only happens in specific cases now because you are displaying relative dates that are going to change over a period of time depending on when they were accessed this this error is inevitable. One way to fix this is to add a suppress rehydration warning prop to the element. So if we generate a recent date and then use that as the value, so this date you can see it's 10 seconds ago. So if we refresh the page, the date will be changing as you refresh the page, but you can see the rehydration warning has disappeared. So this prop fixed it. So if you know you're going to display a value that is changing over time, like a stock ticker for example, or a date, then you can just add this suppress hydration warning to the element where you are displaying that value and you won't see the dehydration errors. So this should fix it, commit this, push this to production and close your computer. But you can also fix this without having to add the suppress hydration warning. So you can do it the way we have done in the home component here by using the get server side props. So you can do it by computing the value on the server. So let's copy this function over here. So what we are going to do is uh, move over the implementation from the component to the server side props function. So what you are going to do is return the props with the say a from now prop, which is uh, this function run on the server here. So we can access the from now prop and then use it here. And then we can remove the suppress hydration warning error. So this should work for us. So if we refresh the page, the time period is correctly set and but now we are displaying it from the server instead of calculating it on the client. Let's generate a more recent date that we can use there. So this date is, was 11 seconds ago. So if we refresh the page, you can see that the warnings are not being shown but the time period is changing. So this is how I would fix this issue. If you have a better way to solve this, then I would be happy to know about it. So another hydration warning I face comes from uh, the way you set up your DOM elements. So let's Let's visit this DOM page for example. So we're just displaying a simple hello world message here in a paragraph tag. So let's try for example 
to wrap this world here in a div inside the paragraph so if you refresh the page you will immediately get another rehydration error and i think this is the most common error that a lot of people face when they are doing server side rendering so the reason why you're getting these hydration errors is because there's rules on how dom elements should uh, be placed so one of the rules is a div cannot appear as a child of a paragraph tag it can only be a parent element so if we change this div for example to a span the error will disappear even if you refresh the page you won't see the same error message this is because a span is a valid element that can appear as a child of a paragraph tag i'm not sure why react are very strict on how you format your dom elements because html is a very forgiving uh, markup language if this text was in a plain html page so let's for example add it in this html page here so let's try to access it it's at 5500 so let's for example use a div inside the paragraph tag in a plain html page the browser will happily render it without any problems you don't have to follow the spec to a t it will display whatever you want it to display and not show you any errors but react follows the rules very strictly so if you see this kind of a rehydration error make sure to check your html elements to see if you're breaking some rules the problem i have with this error message also is that uh, it's very vague in what you're supposed to do so it says expected server html to contain a matching div in p so what am i supposed to do with this information what do you mean so let's click on uh, the see more info link maybe it will have information for us that we can act on so text content does not match server rendered html why this error occurred while rendering your application there was a difference between the react tree that was pre-rendered from the server and the react tree that was rendered during the first render in the browser during hydration so courses can occur from incorrect nesting of html tags like div nested in a pig tag so they show the cause of the error message here so if you click the learn more link you can at least narrow down your error but they could have just told you this information on the error page here and this dom matching error can get very weird especially for tables so let's say we have this table component there's a table with a header a body and a some elements so this is a valid table so let's try to load it it's on the tables page so you can see our table is rendered here correctly with the t-head and the elements of the t-board now if you miss a section of this table so let's say we omit the t-header element and they just use the tr element after the table element and then refresh the page we'll get a similar error expected server html to contain a matching tr in table again this error makes no sense i don't know what to do with this information at all so if you try to render this table in a plain html page for example this page here so let's put it inside the body tag and then go and access it if you inspect the elements of that table there's something here that you'll notice you see in our table we omitted the t head element but a t body element has been automatically added by the browser for us next to the t body element that we wrote ourselves it looks like the browser noticed that we did not add a t head element and just added another wrapper element the t body element for us to display the table correctly Correctly. So what I get from this is that all the TR nodes should have at least an element wrapping them that is a part of the table. So in our tables object, if we for example wrap this in a T body, that should get rid of the error for us. Let's try to refresh. Yeah, that gets rid of the error for us. So that means if we change this back to a T head and then omit the T body element, Next.js will complain when you reload the page. Yeah. So I think this is specific to the table element only. That's why you even noticed that uh, the browser tried to fix the table tag for us. So if you are writing raw tables and you get an error like this, make sure to check if you have a wrapping element around the TR nodes. So you wrap the tr either with a t body or a t head and the error message will be fixed i think that wraps up the problems that i have with the server side rendering issues i know i have way more problems but these are the ones that came to mind while i was thinking about this topic so i don't know if you have any more issues with server side rendering that you may want me to look into so if you have them please leave your suggestions in the comment section thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video